Hey folks, today we're going to take a look at the digestive system and in particular we're going to focus on the path that food takes through the digestive system and some of the helper organs, the auxiliary organs that uh, make the whole process work better. So let's get started. We're going to start up at the mouth. Uh, the teeth's role is to break things up into smaller pieces. That's we're going to find out later is mechanical digestion. The tongue, great big muscle with uh, taste buds on it, uh, pushes food around, helps mush it around a little bit. Mushing is a scientific term. Um, and it also ends up pushing the food back to get it ready for swallowing. Um, it has taste buds that send information off to the brain so that you can enjoy what you eat. You'll also see in the diagram there are some salivary glands. They produce saliva and the role of saliva is to moisten the food, make it easier to swallow, but it also plays an important role in changing the starches into sugars. More about that um, next week. From the mouth we go to the pharynx and you can see in the diagram the pharynx is all of the green, blue, and purple area. If we were a higher end, you know, life science class, we might be in focusing on the difference, differences in the different pharynxes. For our purposes, we just need to know that there's a pharynx, also called a throat. The big idea is that the pharynx is a place that does two things. Food passes through the pharynx into the esophagus and air passes into the trachea. To keep food from getting into the trachea and as a result into your lungs, you have an epiglottis and in the diagram there's a tiny little flap and it's important that you see what that flap looks like. That flap closes automatically every time you swallow. The uh, <clears throat> trachea um, is that vacuum cleaner hose thing that you can feel in the front of your throat. The esophagus, the part we're interested in today, is behind the trachea and that's the path that food takes. The esophagus then is a long muscular tube, works, goes from the, from the pharynx, from the throat, down to the stomach. Uh, next week we'll learn about uh, peristalsis, the process of pushing it down. At the end of the esophagus, before the esophagus reaches the stomach, there is a muscle, a type of muscle called a sphincter muscle. A sphincter is a, is a ring of muscle that closes an opening. There are many different types of sphincters. We'll talk about a few today. This particular sphincter is important if you know anyone who has acid reflux disease or suffers from acid reflux. If that sphincter muscle doesn't close tightly, some of the acids from the stomach can find their way into the trachea. Whereas the stomach has mucus linings to protect it from its acid, the esophagus does not. So that's the reason acid reflux hurts so much also called heartburn. The stomach is about the size of your two fists put together, although everyone's a little bit different. It's a storage tank for food, but it's a very special storage tank. It uh, produces a mucus, it produces hydrochloric acid, um, does all kinds of things to begin the breakdown of um, proteins and other types of products within your food. Um, it protects itself from the hydrochloric acid with the mucus layer around the outside or on, around the inside of the stomach. That hydrochloric acid burns. That's what you feel when you throw up and get some hydrochloric acid in your nose, that burning sensation. It's also really nasty for teeth. We've seen what happens when we put uh, acid and calcium based products together. Well, your teeth have a lot of calcium in them and hydrochloric acid from throwing up will wear your teeth away. If you should ever have to throw up, it's important that you brush your teeth immediately afterward. From the stomach, we move on to the small intestine. It's the kind of squiggly thing in the middle of that, uh, that graphic that you see there. A major feature of the small intestine is found on the inside, and those are the villi. You see a cross section in the middle of the screen the villi are tiny little finger-like projections that allow blood vessels to have much more surface area so that the small intestine can um, absorb more of the nutrients. Deer hunters, if you've ever gotten a gut shot, you know that they bleed a lot. The reason they bleed a lot is there's so many blood vessels there. Now, if you were to take a look at the camera here, 
you can see this little dog toy. And this little dog toy has got lots of little projections. Those pro little projections are kind of like what the V-Lite looks like. So this would be a model of those V-Lite. And again, their role is to increase the surface area to make it easier for um, materials to be taken from the small intestines and get into the bloodstream to the rest of the body. The small intestine needs a little help for breaking down certain products, in particular fats. And that's one of the many roles of the liver is to produce a substance called bile. Bile breaks down fat much the same way that dishwashing liquid breaks down grease when you do the dishes. The bile that the liver makes is stored in a gallbladder. Maybe you know someone who's had gallstones. Those are mineral deposits that plug up the gallbladder and make life painful. Uh, you may know people who've had their gallbladder removed. You can certainly live without a gallbladder, but you have to modify your diet. The gallbladder helps the liver deliver the bile to the small intestines, that bile breaking down fat. Well, if you don't have a gallbladder, then you have to carefully monitor the fats that you eat. More about that next week. Your pancreas does a variety of things. Um, it helps produce some more digestive enzymes that break down more materials for us. It also controls blood sugar, producing the insulin that we need. But that's a different subject altogether. We'll get to that later. The last step in this process is the large intestine. And it's called the large intestine because of its diameter. It's rather thick. Um, its main job is to absorb water. It absorbs water from the food that you eat. If that does not do the job properly and the water stays in the food, you may have a condition known as diarrhea. If that does the job too well, then you may be constipated. Um, the remaining material that has all of the nutrients taken out of it um, is called the feces and that will exit the body through the rectum. The rectum is the very last part of the large intestine and the, it, uh, the feces will leave the body through another sphincter muscle. Uh, the anus is a sphincter muscle, again, one of many, many muscles. A sphincter, again, is just a circular muscle that controls the, an opening or can open and close an opening. Um, it is learning to control this muscle that little kids need to do when they are being potty trained. All right. That's the end of what we need to do for today. Thanks for watching. What I'd like to do here real quickly is to... Just zip through the credits. If someone wants to know where we got some of these pictures from, they can freeze the video. And that way people get credit for what they've done. Thanks for watching and take care.